ready and I say I'm born ready. Everybody say I'm born ready. See, God knew you in the womb. And the Bible even says he knew you before you were in the womb. So if he knew you, he prepared you. And the Bible said, you know, Jeremiah said, well, you know, like he anointed me in the womb. I believe I was anointed and you were anointed to be who you were called to be in the womb. Even before he anointed you. And so we're anointed of God. Everybody say, I'm anointed of God. And God knew everything you were going to face in your life before you ever faced it, prepared you with whatever you need to have the victory. The scripture for that is God has already given us everything that we need for life and godliness. You might say, well, there's so much sin in the world. You know, I've, I've heard this. I heard this, you know, they say, boy, our children, you know, we, we have a tendency almost to curse our children. Oh, the world's so different than when we grew up. And, oh, I feel so sorry for our children. They're not going to make it because it's so bad. No, don't put that curse on your children. I say in the name of Jesus, God has given our children and our children's children everything they need for this life and to be godly in this life. Amen. That actually when darkness covers the earth, the glory of God comes upon our children and children's children. And it's, and it's because God has promised Abraham, God has promised us. Because of our prom the promise he made to us about our children, he'll do it, he'll keep his promise. So God has his hand upon our children and children's children. He has it on his hand. Just put your hand over just so you'll know. God has his hand upon us. And the word says that everything our hand touches, everything we put our hands to prospers. So we put our hands over our lives, over our children, over our families, over our children's children. We release the anointing of the firepower of God, the blood of Jesus, the covenant of God, and that God is our God from generation to generation. He watches over us and the power of the Holy Ghost is alive in us. He baptizes us in the Holy Ghost and fire. And he baptizes our children, even our children's children, down through the generations in the Holy Ghost and fire in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. And so here I am once again, the Lord told me in the month of March to wear my coat of many colors. It's the favor of God. It's the love of God. It's the promises of God. It's the prosperity of God. It's that if you get in a bad situation, God turns a bad situation to a good situation. That's what we wear. It is on us everywhere we go. God wanted me to wear this the whole month to remind us we're always wearing the, listen, the coat of many colors that our Father has given us. It's always on you. It's always on you. So God wants you to see it. I said, God wants you to see it. He wants you to know that you're cl clothed in his righteousness. You're clothed in the power of his love. You're clothed in the Holy Spirit. You're clothed in the anointing of God. You're clothed in the blood of Jesus, the power of God. You're clothed with signs, wonders, and miracles. Oh, we, we got so many things to share today. I'm glad to invite everybody from around the world with us. We have been praying, Sonny, we've been praying. Anna, we've been praying. Deborah's going to take a prayer and put it on our YouTube account, maybe on our Facebook account. And uh, those prayers, I see Sonny Bro is watching. We send love to you. And, uh, but we want you to know that we prayed some powerful prayers. If you're gonna pray prayer, why not powerful prayers? Well, what is powerful prayers? Pro prayers that believe God. It's believing prayers. Don't pray doubting prayers. Oh God, I guess you're not gonna be able to answer this one. Don't pray that prayer. Pray the prayer, God, I know you hear me. And if I know you hear me, I have the petition for which I ask in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Pray that kind of prayer, that powerful prayer. It releases the power of God into the situation you're praying about. It releases the power of God in your life. Can you say amen? Oh, I got so many good things for you today. Miss Reed, I'm glad to see you. Mr. Dale, I'm glad. I'm, say, I'm glad to see all of you. I had a, a, a thing. I, my, my, my wife wanted to go pick something. My wife is like, she does, so, Deborah does so many projects. So I had to go to Lowe's with her. And, you know, when I go to Lowe's, I'm just kind of walking around. She's, she's going to get stuff. And then she says, could you go get a light bulb for me? I said, sure. So I had to find out where the light bulbs. They say, go to aisle 14, you know. 
So I'm going to look for light bulbs. I, I went to the light section. They're not, it's not in the light section. They got all these lights with all the bulbs on. Don't go there. It's in another aisle way down in the store, like aisle 14 somewhere, you know. So I, so I just, you know, I'm, I just, I'm got my mask on. I don't know where I put my mask here. Uh, but anyway, I had my mask on, and it's my Jesus mask. And it says John 3.16 equals Jesus. I wear it everywhere I go. And so I'm wearing the Jesus mask, and I just start praising God. My wife's kind of gone somewhere. So I just start praising God, and I'm making up songs about how Jesus is watching over me and the glory of God. Hallelujah. I just want to sing hallelujah. Jesus over me. I'm going down the, in the store. Ha, about that loud. Hallelujah. Jesus set me free. I want to say hallelujah. The glory. Now I'm still looking for the light. The glory. I'm looking for light, so I'm looking for the glory of God. The glory of God is upon me. I want to sing hallelujah. I'll keep my eyes open sometime. Hallelujah. A glory to God. I want to sing hallelujah. Jesus set me free. I want to sing hi. And so I'm doing this while I'm looking for light bulbs. I'm going down different aisles. I finally ask somebody, go, go, you got to go down to 14 over there. I say, thank you, Jesus. A glory to God. So I'm just doing that. It's what I do. You know, so I'm going to do that. And it's got a big Y. I mean, the ceiling's tall. So, you know, you can, you could really sing, you know. So I'm singing glory to God. And there's a guy in one of those carts, you know, you can get in a little car. Uh, I don't know what they call them, the little carts where you can get in it. And so they have riding carts and he's there. And uh, he sees, he's at the end of the aisle going this way and I'm going around the other aisle because I finally found 14 and I'm going up 14. And he's coming this way. And all of a sudden he said, hallelujah, glory God. Thank you, Jesus, man. I say, well, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And now he's saying glory to God, and I'm going down the aisle. And I finally find the light bulbs, and all of a sudden he comes in his little cart all the way at the back. And he comes around, and he said, he said, uh, I like that song you were singing. Do you know this other song? I said, well, what song is that? He said, where, where, where the devil, uh, I, I caught the devil, you know, and he stole from me. And I said, what is that? You know that song? I, I, I was trying to think, huh? Yeah, I went to the enemy's camp. And how did it go? And I took back what he stole from me. I took back what he stole from me. I went to the enemy's camp. And I took back what he stole from me. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. He's under my feet. The devil is under my feet. Hallelujah. So then he's trying to find that on his iPhone. You know, He's trying to find it. He comes up with some other one. I don't know what he was thinking. And so I'm finding that one. And, and I get to that one. Oh, the, I went to the end. I'm saying, glory, Jesus. I went to the enemy's camp. And he just all of a sudden, he says, uh, he says, my name, my name is Calvin. I forget what his last name was. He took, no, he suddenly said, my name's Calvin something. He said, what's your name? I said, my name, and of course I got a mask on, you know. He said, my name is Jules Boke. Pastor Jules? I said, yeah, Pastor Jules. And he starts talking. He said, I know Shelma. I go to tell Shelma the deacon. Calvin the deacon. I used to go to church with Shelma. said, make sure you tell Shelma that you saw the deacon. So I'm telling you, I saw the deacon. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But he knew about, when I started thinking about, I went to the enemy's camp, took back. He said, I, I went to church with Shelma, because I knew she'd gone in the enemy camp, taking back all the devil's toll. Can you say amen? amen? So I'm, you know, this is the way we live. I said, this is the way we live. Yes. And uh, so here I am. I mean, I live with my wife, who is like the Holy Ghost. She is like, she's so anointed. She's so positive. She is a, a noble woman of faith. She's like Deborah the judge in the Bible. I mean, she is like power woman, you know. And so we talking about scripture the other day. And she reminded me some, that we had gone to a Kenneth Copeland meeting at Jesse's church just a few weeks ago. 
And he preached a message that I'll never forget. He talked about in Matthew chapter 6, where God is saying, Jesus is saying, look, you know, God takes care of birds. And he gave them such a glory that not even Solomon in all of his glory can match the glory of God to birds and flowers. I mean, God did, the birds, they don't have to worry about a thing. They get up in the morning. I had my, I had my uh, granddaughter the other day. I pulled up a, something on the internet and we pressing something on the internet and you could hear all the different birds. You press this bird, the Baltimore Oriole, this bird, the red bird, the cardinal. You, and you press it and it has how they sing. And it had different singing. So I'm, we, I'm listening to this sitting on our front porch. And all of a sudden the birds out there in the trees started singing. And I said, stop. And I said, listen, listen to that bird, listen to that bird. And you know, God said the birds, when they wake up in the morning, they're not worried about what they're going to eat. God feeds them. He clothes them. He takes care of them. So he said, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Don't worry about what, you, what kind of clothes you're going to wear. He said, don't worry about anything. I'm taking care of you. If I, if I think that much about the birds, if I think that much about the plants, no, I'm really watching over you. You don't have to worry. You see, don't worry. And then so Kenneth Copeland read a scripture. And in that scripture, it said this, Matthew 631. Matthew 631, King James Version. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we be clothed with? He said, don't take a thought. In other words, don't worry about what you're going to eat, drink, and don't worry, don't worry about all your bills. Now, you've got to take care of your bills. You've got to find food. You've got to do all that. But God's watching over you. But Kenneth Copeland took four words out of that scripture, and it, it struck me. Take no thought saying. Don't take the thought that's going to worry, doubt, be negative, speak against faith. Don't take that thought saying it. Don't say that thought. Don't say that thought. And anytime I say that thought, I got the Holy Ghost in me to correct me. And in case I miss it, I got my wife, the Holy Ghost, in my house. And that's, that's the God honest truth. I, I want to thank God for a wife that if I say one thing that doesn't sound faith, she'll say, that don't sound like faith. Amen. I used to long ago argue, oh, some kind of way it is faith. And she's saying, that don't sound like faith. That's, a, that's not the kind of faith that I understand looks like, sounds like, is faith. I, it doesn't sound like faith to me. Can you explain, she used to ask me. Can you explain to me how that is faith? And I would try to figure it out and explain it to her until I finally got so messed up with my speech, I said, no, it's not faith. I just got to repent. So now if I hear it, I said, yep, yeah, I got to turn that off. So I grabbed the whole, so the title of the message today, I'm going to give you five things today, real simple. I'm going to talk about them. I'm going to talk about them first. I'm going to give it to you, one, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to go through some scriptures. But I was telling Deborah this while we were discussing faith. Faith is a regular discussion in our home. Faith is a regular, it's a daily event in our house. Talking faith, talking about God, talking about the Holy Spirit, talking about the plans of God, talking about destiny. It is a daily conversation in our house. So I, I shared with her while we were talking and I said these words and that's the title of the message. I said these words, I caught a saying. I caught a saying. Jesus was saying, if you could catch my saying, if you have ears to hear, hear what the spirit says. We say often in church, oh, more is caught than taught. I don't agree with that. More is taught than caught. There's a lot of teaching, but not a lot of catching. Right. So today I want to share with you around the world and in here that that day I said, I caught a saying and the Lord says, I want you to catch a lot of sayings. 
And so I'm going to start putting together sayings. I already have some sayings. You've heard me say things over the years. I've said this many times when I was getting ready to go overseas and I knew God was sending me. I said, if anybody, you heard me say this. This is one of my sayings. I caught this saying. If anybody on the planet, you know what I'm getting ready to say. If anybody on the planet is going to be in the right place at the right time, doing the right thing, it's me. I'm going to be in the right place. I'm going to be there at the right time. And I'm going to be doing the right thing. And the, and the glory of God, everything is. And I, I, I came up with another saying the other day that God's glory is going to be my story. God's going to be glorifying in what we do. He's going to be glorified in what we do. And God's glory will become my story. That's my story is God's glory. I tell you, when Lazarus came out of the tomb, God's glory became his story. Because Jesus told his sister, well, didn't I tell you, if you only believe, you would see the glory? Didn't I tell you, you would see the glory of God? Didn't I tell you, if you believe, that you would see the glory of God? She said, yeah, when you go to heaven, yeah. No, 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 now. You don't just believe for heaven, you believe for heaven on earth. You believe for heaven on earth. God says what heaven has is meant for earth now. Thank God we go to heaven one day, but you can experience heaven today. Does anybody listen? So I, I told Deborah, I said, oh, this is it, Deborah. I said, this is it. I caught a saying. So I'm going to give you five sayings I've caught. And what I, I, I was really constructing these to be able to share in order. Number one. Take no thought saying. Listen, most of the time we're faced with situations. I study the Bible and I was thinking about this day or the other day. That if you really study the Bible from Genesis to, Genesis to Revelation and everything in between. And you study the great men and women of God. And you study their lives, you study their faith, you study their victories, you study their miracles. You study the prophets. You've studied Moses going through the Red Sea. Whenever you study them, you find that they're in some bad situations. There's a lot of mess going on. There's a lot of drama happening. There's a lot of struggle. There's a lot of enemy attacks. There's a lot of, I mean, hell has broke loose against these people. But in the midst of that, you see the glory of God and the, the great stories of God is them overcoming every power of darkness, every weapon that the enemy came against them with. You see them rise above it and you hear somebody like Caleb. He said, I want to tell you, God is well able to give us that promised land. Oh, yeah, but look at those big giants. Those giants are going to flee before us. God has already melted their heart like wax. They're already terrified of us. Give me my mountain. When he came back, give me my mountain. I'm 85 years old now, but I'm just as strong as I was 40 years ago. Give me my mountain. You see, that it, it's a different story because they had faith. But it's always faith in the midst of struggle. There was always judgment going on. Prophets always prophesied. The, the reasons they killed the prophets, the prophets were always prophesying that, hey, because of your sin, you're getting ready to have destruction come. They didn't want to hear it, so they killed the prophet, thinking they'd get rid of the prophecy. Prophecy still happens. Jesus said to, to the people that were coming against him, all those religious people, it's you, it's your parents, it's your fathers, it's your ancestors that killed the prophets. And you're doing the same thing today. That's what he was telling them. Prophets, being a pro oh, everybody wants to be a prophet. The prophet business is a very difficult business because there's a lot of opposition to the prophet because no one wants to hear it. So listen, I want to go, I was really thinking about that because they were always, listen, they were always in the middle of difficult situations, major challenges. But what did they do? They didn't take, listen, they didn't, they didn't, they caught this saying, they didn't take thoughts of negativity and defeat and said they were going to be defeated. They always say, y'all, they looked at the enemy like Goliath and David said, uh, you in trouble now. Goliath comes out, he's huge. You know, I did a study on Goliath one time. Minimum height was nine foot nine, depending on what a cubit was, and they're trying to figure out what that was back then. But he could have been as tall as 13 feet. That's big. Now, when you go up, you also go wide. You know, when you go up, you get big. The average Jew 
was like five foot tall. I mean, he's five foot tall, and he's a minimum, like 10 feet tall, minimum 10 feet tall, and you're five feet tall. I once went into, uh, what is that, uh, believe it or not, uh, Ripley's. Ripley's. They had one in New Orleans at one time. And right when you walked in, it was a Ripley's, believe it or not. And they had the world's tallest man. He was like eight foot tall. And I walked up to him. I'm five, six. And I looked. They had a wax figure of him. And it's like, he was huge. He wasn't just tall. He was like huge. I said, and I started thinking about Goliath. I said, he was small compared to Goliath. Goliath was a giant. And David, David looked at the army and said, why are y'all hiding from that guy? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that dared to defy the armies of the living God? I mean, that's a, I mean, that's a giant with an army. And the whole army of Israel is hiding. Even the king of Israel, who was tall, he was over six foot tall. He's hiding. Everybody's hiding. He said, oh, my God. They go out to fight. Here comes Goliath out. I mean, his sword was taller than the men of Israel. They would run. They'd head for the hills. And one day, here comes David with some food for his brother, bringing some sandwiches, you know. And, here's, and, they say, and he hears Goliath booming. Ah, oh, look at you scared little pet pee plebes over there. Who is that guy? Who is that uncircumcised Philistine? He doesn't have a covenant with God. And they said, shut up, boy, before somebody hears you. And then somebody heard him. And they brought him before the king. The king was scared. And he said, you willing to go fight? Yeah, here, take my armor. He tries to put the armor on David. It was so big, it didn't fit David. I mean, the guy's over six foot tall, and David's like a little five foot guy, you know? And it just doesn't fit. He said, look, I don't need that. I don't need any armor. I already got armor. Because when he went against Goliath, and Goliath said, hey, I'm going to feed you. Who, who are you, you little, you little peep squeak? Who are you to come against me? I'm going to feed you to the birds. And he looks at, he said, listen, you come against me with a, with a, a spear and a sword but I, and a shield, but I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts who I belong to. I belong to him and I'm coming against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Amen. And he comes with a little slingshot with five stones. He takes one stone, pop, hits him, cuts his head off and holds it up. And all the Philistine army said, oh my God. And they all start running. <laughs> Many people would have said, oh my God, I'm facing this giant today. You see, you're facing a giant situation today. A, a giant situation in your body, a giant situation in your family, a giant situation in your, in your business, in your money, in, you know, in, your, in your home and in your life, like, oh my God. And we have intended to say, oh my God, I'm facing this giant. How am I going to handle it? Take no thought saying. I know the thought's going to come. Cast it down and don't say it. So it's like, I'm thinking this thought. I, I caught this saying. You, you listen? I caught the saying. I'm releasing it to you today to catch this saying. Take no thought saying. Don't say the doubt. I want to say it again. Don't say the doubt. If there's a doubt, throw it out. If there's a doubt, throw it out. Don't say it. Don't say it. If there's a doubt, throw it out. Don't say it. Instead, the second, speak God's higher purpose. Take no thought saying, speak God's, you see, what are you going to say? Speak God's higher purpose. I say it again, speak God's higher purpose. God said this, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. My ways are higher than your ways. When I send the word to you, my word is not going to return void, but it's going to accomplish the purpose that I sent it to accomplish. So instead of saying the negative thought, take no thought saying. Instead, what are you going to say? Speak God's higher purpose. Grab a hold to God's higher thought and say that. What is the purpose that God has in this situation? Say that. What does God say about this situation? Say that. So take no thought saying, number one, and instead, number two, speak God's higher purpose. Number three, God has anointed me with God's favor. God has anointed me with his favor. I have favor wherever I go. So you... 
Listen, you take no thought saying, you speak God's higher purpose, and you know that God has anointed you with favor, and favor, listen, you have favor wherever you go. I'm wearing this today to remind you we have favor. The, listen, the father of Joseph was, what was his name? He had 12 children, 12 tribes of Israel, Jacob, Israel. So Israel has one of his younger sons named Joseph, and he looks at Joseph, and all of a sudden God has, gives uh, Israel, Jacob, a vision of his son. He said, this son has the favor of God on him. So he made him a coat of many colors, and he put it on him. And so now the guy's going around and telling his brothers well, he's having dreams and visions from God. He says, y'all going to all bow down to me, even my mother and father, y'all going to bow down to me. And they said, we're well, going to bow down to you. Really? You know, we hate you for saying that. Even the father had to reprimand him. But then the father said, you know what? Maybe God's showing him something. Maybe God's showing him. But the brothers were so jealous that we know the story. I've been talking about it a lot. They captured him. They were going to kill him. But Reuben, the oldest, said, no, you're not going to kill him. You can put him in a pit, but you're not killing him. So they put him in a pit, they take his coat, they put it with blood of an animal, tell the daddy that he got eaten by an animal. And then they take Joseph and they sell him as a slave to his cousins. What a family. You thought you had a family. You have family problems. Can you imagine your family taking you, put you in a pit and sell you as a slave to your cousins and they bring you to another country and sell you, I mean really sell you as a slave. That's not a good family, but it was a God-blessed family. The devil meant to destroy the promise that God had given to Abraham. Abraham had a son named Isaac. Isaac had a son named Jacob, and he became the God of Abraham. Oh, I'm now the God of, of Isaac. Now I'm the God of Jacob. Oh, now I I'm changing your name to Israel. You had all these children, and I'm the God of all their generations. And the devil said, no, 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 no. I'm going to mess up this family so bad, God can't even use it. You, your family might seem so badly messed up that you don't think God can use it. Think about what they did with this boy. They sell him as a slave. He gets lied at there. We know the story. He gets put in prison. Now he's in prison. But the favor of God, they might have taken the coat, but they couldn't take the coat away because it was on his spirit. Amen. They couldn't take it away. So point one is he could have, listen, this boy named Joseph could have taken every thought saying, well, it's over for me. Oh, now I'm a slave. Oh, no. <laughs> it's always going from bad to worse. No, he didn't say that. He didn't take that thought. He didn't take the thought, oh, God, it's the way I live. It's just the way we are. My whole family's a mess and everything's gone from bad to worse. Oh, what other thought do I need to say? Don't take the thought saying. Speak God's higher purpose. God has a higher purpose for you. Are you listening? That you are anointed. God, listen, God has anointed me with favor. And I have favor wherever we go. I don't care if I'm in a pit. Listen, they want to kill me? Reuben will say something. Oh, now they sold you into slavery? They're going to put me and promote me in, in, where I'm in charge of the whole place. Oh, now you're in prison, lied about? I'm going to run the jail. Oh, they forgot to tell the, the Pharaoh how good you were on, on dream telling and all that? I don't care if he forgot me. God didn't forget me. I'm not taking the thought saying I'm speaking God's higher purpose. I have this anointing of favor upon my life, and I have favor wherever I go. Is somebody saying amen? That's three. Four. Oh, I love this one. I love this one. I wanted to pass out cards. I didn't have any cards. With, with, with one word on it. And the word is yes. Yes. Yes has been assigned to me. That's point four. Yes has been assigned to me. I say amen to every yes. The Bible says that God has given us promises. He's backed up his promise with his oath. 
he swore on himself that the promise that he made to Abraham and his descendants and his children, which includes us, that the promise that God made to us through Abraham, through Christ, we become Abraham's seed through Christ. So the promise that God gave to Christ to us, that every one of those promises that he gives to you and me through his word, it'll come to pass. He says, I'll watch over my word to perform. it." And he said, I say yes to every promise. And you say amen to every yes. So point four, and I'll go to the scripture in a minute. Yes has been assigned to me. So I wanted to wear a little badge that said yes. It's been assigned to me. Now, can you imagine that God's passing out cards? You can choose any card you want, and he's handing you yes cards. Yes, 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 yes to the promises of God. Yes, God will heal you. Yes, the miracles coming your way. Yes, yes, deliverance coming to your children. Yes, that prodigal son's coming home. Yes, that the promotion is happening to you. Yes, the breakthrough is now. Yes, you're going to be in abundance. Yes, and people are throwing the yes on the ground. No, babe, I don't want this one. Give me a no. Wow. No, that ain't going to happen. No, there's no way. Give me, I'm throwing away my yes card. Oh, you're throwing away your yes card? Oh, I'll take it. You, you throwing away your yes card? I'll take it. I mean, I'll take every yes card. I'll come up with a stack of yes cards. Are you listening? Because listen what I'm saying. Yes has been assigned to me. Yes has been assigned to me. I say amen to every yes God sends my way. Is anybody listening? Let me give you the scripture. Let me give you. The, I'm going fast, so I'm... I didn't give you some of the scriptures about the faith. Let me give you the scripture on the favor first. Isaiah 61. Oh, can I go back? Did I give you the number three on the favor? Did I talk about the favor? You did. I did, didn't I? Yeah. I want to hear it. God has anointed me with favor, his favor. I have favor wherever I go. Let me give you the scripture. You might say, where does that come from? Isaiah 61. Jesus quoted this scripture. The spirit of the Lord, the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me. To proclaim good news to the poor, he sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, release from darkness for the prisoners. Oh, are you ready for this one? And to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I got so much favor coming my way, it's overflowing and I got to tell you about it. I got so much favor upon my life, I have been anointed with favor. The favor of the Lord is upon me. I have favor everywhere I go. I got so much favor, I'm going to give you some. I'm going to give you some. I'm, I've been anointed to proclaim this is the time of God's favor. You want some favor? Here it is. You, what, you're, you don't know God? Oh, let's go ahead and pray right now. You can get saved and get into the favor of God. This is the acceptable time of the Lord. This is the year of the Lord's favor. Is that good? I'm, I'm anointed to proclaim favor. Everywhere I go, I'm anointed to proclaim favor. Now, let me go to yeses. I've been assigned yeses. I've been anointed with favor, but I've been assigned the yeses. Yes has been assigned to me. I say amen to every yes. My future is full of yeses. There is a yes in your future that will change your life. You listen to me. There is a yes in my future that changes my life. I say amen to that yes. I said I say amen to that yes. Look, oh, I go places. I just this last couple of weeks, I call somebody. I needed something done. No. Call another person. No. Call them back. The answer is still no. Call them back. No. I said, there's a yes in my future. So I called somebody else and they said, yes. Yes. Look for the person with the authority to say yes. yes. Amen. The ones that said no had no authority. To give me the yes, so I found the person with the authority to say yes. Amen. Why? My future is full of yeses. Yes has been assigned to me. There are yeses in my future. Listen to me. I want to go back and say, say the, the point. I want to say the point. <sighs> this, this is so good. Yes has been assigned to me, and I say amen to every yes. That means don't take no. For your answer. Yes is your answer. Yes is waiting for you to come. Look for the yes that is yours. Look for the yes that's assigned to you. Look for your yes. Second Corinthians 1.20 For no matter how many promises God has made, 
They are yes in Christ. This is NIV. For no matter how, oh, God has so many promises. Well, I believe I received that one. God's uh, uh, inspiring me to believe that promise right there. He's sending me this word. He's sending me that promise. But no matter how many promises God has made to you, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Would you say amen to, to God's yeses? It brings glory to him because his glory becomes your story. The New Living Translation, I love this. It says, for all of the promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ, our amen, which means yes. That's what this says. Our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his, for his glory. When we say amen, we're saying, God says yes. I say yes. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. You want this yes card? Yes, I want this yes card. Well, then it'll happen. It'll happen. Is anybody listen? Let me give you a few other translations. I have a lot of translations. Uh, there's a GNT. I got to go back and see what that is. It says, so also will be the word that I speak. It will not fail to do what, what I plan for it. It will do everything. Oh, this is Isaiah 55. 11. It, will, it will do everything that I sent it to do. So when God sends you a promise, it has the ability to fulfill itself. All he's waiting for you to say amen to his yes. Yes has been assigned to you with the power to back that up. And if you believe you receive it, the fulfillment of the promise, the purpose of God will come to pass because you said yes to his yes. Does anybody listen? Well, no, I don't want that. Okay, I'll take it. I remember God sending out words and, and we had at times we had words of God going forth. And I've, I saw people say, I don't want that. It started, it kind of like applied to me. I said, I'll take that word. I, be, I believe, I, I believe I received that word. I mean, I'm believing I'm receiving. Uh, yeah, let's get together and just believe we receive. Yes, amen. Can anybody say amen to them? Number five, God has appointed big, wide open doors of opportunity for me. I want to say it again. Point five, God, this is, this is catching a saying. God has appointed big, wide open doors of opportunity for me. I boldly walk through every God door. See, we need to say that because we won't walk through them. We will not be able to receive it. It's too big. The Bible says Abraham did not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. He wasn't weak in faith. He was strong in faith, giving glory, giving glory, giving glory, giving glory to God. Believing that what God promised, he was able also to perform. You see, the promise was so big to Abraham. What was the promise? Oh, you're going to have a child through Sarah. Well, Sarah can't have children. Okay, she can't have children. She's kind of getting older. Kind of getting older. In fact, she's getting really older. I'm kind of getting older. He became, he became 99 and she was 90 and not ever, ever, she couldn't have children. An angel shows up. An angel, can you believe this? An angel shows up at his house, at his tent. In fact, three angels. One of them is the angel of the Lord, I believe is Jesus, and a couple of other angels accompanying him. And they, they, he, he feeds them. He said, let's, 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 we're going we're gonna to feed you. We're gonna, we want you to stay a while. You know, we need to have God. A lot of times we hear from God and we're so busy. You know, you imagine going to somebody's house and they're so busy and you're there and you feel like, well, they don't have time. I'm just going to leave. But, you know, you come to my house. Hey, you want some coffee? I had a guy show up the other day. He was doing some work. I said, hey, you want some coffee? Or you want something to eat? You know, that's how you are. You want something to eat? We'll, we'll fix something. Do you have anything ready? I don't have anything ready, but, you know, we'll prepare a banquet for you if you want. You know? I mean, we'll start cooking. We'll, we'll get a gumbo going on. We'll get a jambalaya happening. We'll get a crawfish etouffee. But in fact, we'll, you want some boiled crawfish? We'll go get a sack of crawfish. We'll start boiling it right now. How long that'll take? It don't matter how long it'll take. You just hang around. We're going to eat. Makes you feel welcome. You see? And so the angels of the Lord show up. He's 99 years old. His wife's like 90. Think about it. And he said, I just wanted to come by and let you know I didn't forget the promise. You know the promise 
that, you, that I said, yes, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you a, wi a, a wife, a child through your wife, Sarah. And through that child, all the nations of the earth are going to be blessed. Remember that promise? That was like the big one. Yeah, I remember that one. I just want to come to let you know it's, I'm, I'm bringing it to pass like now. About this time next year, and about, you know, this time next year, your wife, who's 90, Miss Ramona, how old are you? 92. You're 92. Can you imagine God coming to your house? Now, come on. Now, everybody look at Miss Ramona. She's 92. And say, about this time next year, you're going to have a child. And you hear her laughing. And, you know, Sarah's in the tent, you know, getting everything ready, getting food ready, getting the plates ready, getting all of everything ready. I mean, they're having a banquet. And she starts laughing. <laughs> I heard that one before. I've been hearing that one all my life. I've been hearing that promise, but it never came to pass. And the angel said, which is Jesus, I hear you laughing in there. And she says, I ain't laughing. <laughs> oh, my laughing. <laughs> I can't only believe this. But Abraham, the Bible says this about Abraham. He did not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't stagger at the promise. The promise was so big. You see, when God gives you a little promise, you're not going to stagger at a little promise. When he gives you a big promise, a big one, you have a tendency to say, well, I don't know. If, I don't know. But the Bible says Abraham didn't stagger at the promise of God through unbelief, but he, he wasn't weak in faith. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God, believing that what God promised, God was able. It wasn't, listen, when you have a big promise, it's not you, it's not you that have the ability to fulfill it. God is able to do what you can't do, and therefore the promise is going to be fulfilled. And so I tell you, this last point, I got so many other scriptures, I'm not going to give it. Caught a saying, the last saying is God has appointed big, wide open doors of opportunity for me. I bold, we got to begin to decree this. I boldly walk through every God door that God has appointed for me. I boldly walk through every God door, not through every door, but every God door. There's a big difference. So I want to go with these, these say, I caught a saying. The first saying I caught is take no thought saying. So I'm like, if I want to say something like, uh, it's a doubt that starts to enter my mind. No, I cast that out. I'm not saying it. I take no, I'm, I'm saying to myself, take no thought saying. Well, what am I going to do instead? Just I'll go around saying, take no thought, take no thought, take no thought saying. No, I speak God's higher purpose. God, what do you say about this? Because you sent a word to me. And when your word gets sent, it's going to happen your higher purpose is going to come to pass in my life. So third, God has anointed me with his favor. I have favor everywhere I go. It's coming out of me. I'm anointed with it. I'm full of favor. I have a future full of favor. I could say I have a favorable future. It's full of favor. Yes, number four, has been assigned to me. I say amen to every yes. God has appointed big, wide open doors of opportunity for me. I boldly walk through every door, whether it's a door of healing, if it's a door of miracles, a door of prosperity, a door where family members get saved, a door to preach the gospel, a door of opportunity to go into business, a door to opportunity to minister to people, a door to opportunity to pray for somebody. I boldly, so I was at Lowe's the other day, I said, you know what? I'm just going to start praising God. I just start praising God. And all of a sudden, the guy said, whoa. And he, his song was, what happened? The devil stole something from me. So I went to the enemy camp. Can you sing that one for me? Yeah, I can sing. I, you see, can you, can you tell people that's lost everything? Yeah, you have a big, wide open opportunity opportunity to go into people's lives that have lost everything and you're anointed to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for a morning. Something's going to change their life. So I want to pray for everybody today. I want to pray. I caught a saying. I caught a saying. And in that saying that I caught, 
It changed my life. It changed what I think. I caught a saying of Christ alive in me. His word coming alive, coming out of my life, coming out of my mouth, coming out of my heart. The Lord has anointed me with his words, his higher purpose. God has a higher purpose for my life, for my family, for my business. God has a higher purpose. And I say he's anointed me with the favor to bring that purpose to pass. And he signed me to be a person that finds the yes when everybody else is finding a no. He's opening up a door for me that no man can close in the name of Jesus. And those wide open doors, I'm walking through boldly in the name of Jesus. And we say amen. Deborah.